right. So today, the topic of my, my message today is called the divine call. Because many people feel like too far gone, like, um, like they've done so bad that God would, you know, never accept them. Man, God, I've heard people say, well, you know, I killed people. I've done drugs. I've been, you know, even people rape people. All this crazy stuff. God will never forgive me. Well, that's a lie from the pits of hell. Amen. Anybody done anything bad? Huh? Not that bad, maybe, hopefully, but maybe you did. God will still love you. Amen. The Bible says, while we were yet in sin. Anybody know? Christ died for us. While we were yet in sin. How many of you saw the Passion of the Christ movie? Pretty, like, drastic, right? It was a lot worse than that in real life. He did that for you. What an awesome God we serve. But the Bible says that it's, it is not God's will that any should perish. Amen. No matter how bad you've been, no matter what you've done wrong, God will forgive you. He forgave me and I was a mess. You was a real mess. <laughs> you don't mind telling you yeah. we have fun like that hallelujah yes. but God has called each and every one of us to repentance yes. and salvation through Christ so he loves you too he wants to have a true intimate relationship with you he don't want it to be a religion but a relationship I grew up in a Lutheran church and it was kind of dry and boring I fell asleep you know this is my dad by the way, let's welcome my dad. He made me go. <laughs> Thank you. Got the word of God planted though. That was a good thing. But it was like the first church of the frozen chosen, they say, you know. And um, it was just about religion, not a relationship. When I turned 21 years old and I gave my life to Christ, I found a relationship with him, which opened up, oh, so many amazing blessings in my life. Got my mind straight, got my heart straight. It was called a transformation being born again, right? So God has called each and every one of us to repentance and salvation. Second Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you. Aren't you glad? Amen. Not wanting any to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Again, that's 2 Peter 3, 9. By the way, if anybody would like a Bible, I'm going to go through some scriptures here. Raise your hand in the code or grab you one. We have plenty of Bibles back there. Okay, a lot of you I know have Bible apps, and that's fine too. But if you can hand out Bibles to anybody needs them, just raise your hands. You can flip through the scriptures together. You know why I like doing that? Because it's not only good to read the scripture, but I, I, I love the thought of the pages of the Bible just giving the devil a headache. You know what I'm saying? He don't want you to read the Bible. So, you know, there's certain... Uh, prominent men that will tell you, don't read your Bible, just follow what I say. Don't listen to that trash, okay? That is a lie from the pits of hell. God sent his word for you, and you need to read it for yourself. Anybody agree? Amen? Amen. All right. So, that was 2 Peter 3, 9. And people also have, you know, depressing thoughts, like, you know, they don't have a purpose in life. Like they don't have a purpose in life and that's a lie from the pits of hell, you know? And uh, they'll think things like, well, why am I here on this earth anyway? Nobody loves me. You ever hear, you, who's old enough to remember that? Nobody loves me, everybody hates me. I guess I'll eat some worms. Yes, remember, remember that? I do. Even the little ones remember that? Okay, all right. <laughs> but that's the mindset of some folks, right? They don't think they have a purpose. But let me tell you, family, you have a divine purpose. You have a divine call from heaven, and God loves you. And you know what else? He loves you just the way you are. Aren't you glad? Mm -hmm. You know, just think of our, you know, if our parents just didn't love us because we made a mistake. You know, we did something wrong. I don't love you anymore. Get out, you know? And some parents might do that, but our God doesn't do that. Amen. He loves you just the way you are, and He'll receive you as you repent and call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. So the Lord also has predestined us with a purpose in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah 29, 11, go ahead and get there. Jeremiah 29, 11, I want you to turn to, because I want you, I want to encourage you to memorize this. If you have a challenge with confidence or a sense of purpose, or if you go through some depression, you know, 
I mean, you know how prominent depression has become? Oh my goodness, depression and anxiety is just everywhere. This, it's a spirit, okay? And I know the doctors will tell you it's a medical. It's a spirit of depression that attacks people. And we're trying to fight depression with medication. We need, we're trying to fight a spirit with medicine. We need to learn how to fight in the spirit realm. It's called spiritual warfare. We're going to fight with the word of God. We're going to fight with the anointing of God against the, the demonic powers of hell. Not with medicine. Okay? Not against medicine. I know we need it for things. But... I'm for Jesus. I'm for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you there yet? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Isn't that encouraging? Say, everybody say, that's God's word to me. See, you can receive that for yourself. I do have a purpose, a divine purpose from heaven. God loves me. He'll accept me as I call upon him. I repent. And then I can step into my purpose and be fruitful within that purpose. But we got to give the Holy Spirit, you know, room to work in your life. The Bible says walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust or desires of the flesh. So we need to learn how to walk in the spirit. Otherwise, we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff through our carnal mind, the feelings of our flesh, and make a ton of more mistakes than we should be. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Turn there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I just like to hear those pages turning. That's beautiful. Hallelujah. Or seeing some thumbs exercise on your phone and your Bible app. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 10 says... For we are God's handiwork. I know some people, that's so, I can feel it in the spirit. It's, it's difficult for some of you to receive that. That you're God's handiwork. Let it sink in for a minute. Receive that. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. He's given you a purpose. He has a plan for you to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. You're his handiwork and he's created you to do good works. How many of you know the Bible also says faith without works is dead? You know, a lot of people call on the name of Jesus and then you never see any fruit in their life. It's called lip service. It's not a heart change, not a heart transformation. We got to be sincere. And this is how I did it. Many years ago, 30 years ago, I was, I was invited to a church, and it was a charismatic church. Remember, I grew up in a Lutheran church, so it's like night and day difference. They knew how to worship the Lord, plus it was all black church. I was the only white guy there, and they really know how to worship the Lord. I'll tell you, dancing and shouting, and whoo, it was so exciting. I was just, just nervous, to be honest with you. Like, man, I've never seen any crazy people like this. Is it worship? I mean, you know, got the lady next to me with her hands up in the air, tears coming down her face with a smile on her face. And I looked up, I said, she got something I have, I don't have. I want that. I have some void, something missing in my life. And I prayed and received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit came upon me, in, in me. And my whole desires changed on the inside. I may have looked different on the outside. However, though, when I came home, in the same house they live in today, 30 years ago, I walked in the kitchen. The lady was with me. My mom looked at me. And she, I didn't even say anything. She looked over at me. She said, what happened to you, son? <laughs> and the lady behind me said, he gave his life to Jesus today. Because she saw something different. Like I was glowing. I was a different person. I was miserable, miserable before. I mean, your face, your countenance changes when you have the Holy Spirit in your life. You know, you might have been bitter, anger, angry, or frustrated all the time, and just like not happy, not fulfilled on the inside. You know, maybe some demons got a hold of you, and you just can't get free. But I was free. The Bible says, you know, the truth, the truth shall set you free, it'll make you free. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through him. And so I was free because of the truth, Yeshua, inside of me. 
So you are God's handiwork, and I don't want you to doubt. Don't let the devil, you know, speak it. We just did a demonstration in class the other day where I put a blindfold. I think it was on Tristan, didn't I? Put a blindfold on him, and I said, I want two people... One act like a, a, a the bad angel, one good angel, the Holy Spirit, the devil, whatever. And I want you to tell him how to get to his destination. I put a cone on the floor. Tell him how to get there. And I, so, and I told the other kid, tell him the, a lie. Tell him to go the wrong direction. Give him, give him bad directions, right? But sound like it's really good. Sound like you're honest. And the kid, you know, you were lost, right? Was that you, Tristan? Yeah. yeah he didn't know where to go. Like, like all the way on the other side of the classroom. Do you know that that happens to us as well? Even as Christians, if you're, if you're, you're not, let me say this. There's a difference between a Christian and a Christian. This is what I mean by that. Okay. Just because we go to church doesn't mean we're Christian. Just because we're raised in a Christian family don't mean we're Christian, according to scripture. Okay. We got to be born again. The Bible says flesh is born of flesh. The spirit is born of spirit. We must be born again by the spirit of God. There should be a transformation. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus by calling upon the name of the Lord and being saved. So just like I did in that church, they called, they did a, uh, they called people forward to receive Christ. I was the first one up there. I said, that's me. I need the Lord. I prayed. God changed my heart. I had a transformation. I didn't want to do the same things anymore. If you're still wanting to do all the same things you did before, live the same life you did before, maybe you didn't get saved. Okay, I, I have friends that, that just had lip service. You know, Lord, I give you my life. And then they went back home around the same people, did the same things. They never changed. My life was drastically changed along with many other people that I've met over the years. Your life was drastically changed, right? And so God did that. It wasn't in my strength. And God can do that for you as well. So don't believe these lies that you're not worthy. You know, you're worthy in Christ. Because of him, not because of your own strength. It's not about you. Uh, you know, you have no purpose. God don't really care. Nobody cares about you. You're all alone. It's a life in the pit of hell. Listen, I love you. And it may not even look like I love you all the time because I'm not with you all the time. But if I spent some time with you, you'd see. You see. Right? We went and loved on a homeless person the other day. You know, was that yesterday? Yep. Yeah. Brother Cosmo praying for him and blessing him and like we just go spend some time, you know, blessing people. You do have people that love you. You do have a purpose. So don't be discouraged. Be encouraged today. Amen. Amen. I can feel it in my spirit. There's somebody here or some people here that have been discouraged, you've been down and out. You didn't feel like you have purpose. And I just want to let you know, God loves you so much. And he wants to take you and pull you out of that mess and that stinking thinking and give you the mind of Christ so that you can be productive, produce good fruit. Okay? But you are so valuable. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, you're so valuable. Look at your other one. Come on, you're so valuable. Come on, if anybody was missed, make sure you tell them, okay? Don't want to miss anybody. Everybody needs to know you're so valuable. I see you back there. Yeah. You're so valuable. You really are. You really are. God has created you very unique. You got gifts, knowledge, and abilities that other people don't have. Matter of fact, many people are waiting for you to develop your gifts more and be a blessing to them, but you haven't been doing it. God wants you to step forth and start this one. He wants you to start developing the gift he's blessed you with so that you can reach more people and build his kingdom, but you haven't seen past this. You have like this, this thing in the way, you have blinders on, but if you would just get past, remove the blinders, you'll see that God has a big purpose for you and he can use you and wants to use you for his glory. Anybody here ready to receive that? Like, Lord, just use me. Uh, just use me. Uh, you know, even if I'm a mess, just use me. Amen? Amen? He can turn your mess into a message. He'll turn your test into a testimony. If you let him. Like I said earlier, he's not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. Will you make yourself available for the Lord to use you? So also, many people, they get discouraged because they feel like they have to use their own strength. Like, I have to know what I'm doing. My own ability. But God's going to provide the ability 
through his anointing, when you receive the Holy Spirit, when you get saved, like he's gonna he's gonna bless you with the ability to do things you've never been able to do before. I was like so nervous to speak in public. Can I tell you a funny story? It's kind of embarrassing. Can I embarrass myself in front of you? It's okay. Okay, so you can tell me yours too later. No, it's true. So when I was a little boy, I think I was in second grade, we had a little talent show. And I went up in front of the classroom. We had like um, fake microphones and guitars and everything. I did this little talent show. And as soon as I stepped out in front of people, I had the paper microphone. We started singing, what's the matter with the clothes I'm wearing? You know that song, old time rock and roll. And as soon as we start playing that, I started singing, I peed myself. I sure did. I said that in church too. <laughs> I peed myself. I ran around the corner. I was so embarrassed. I was crying. My teacher had to come. And then, guess what? By the time, that was second grade, by the time I got into high school, I still had the same problem. I had to get in front of the classroom behind a podium and read something, and my legs were shaking, my voice was shaking, my arms were shaking, and, 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 and I was so nervous. But I didn't have the Lord in my life. But age 21, I gave my life to the Lord. I'm ready to share the gospel immediately. I started going and like, hey man, the Lord did this in my life. Come to church with me. You got to check this thing out. This is so awesome. Like I'm a different person now. And he can change your life too. I started bringing people to church with me and they'd give their life to the Lord and their life would transform. You know, I'm getting so excited. Where's the next one? I got to talk to somebody else. Like it's so exciting to see people's lives changed right before your eyes. Pastor once said, you can't take anything to heaven with you except for other people. Yes. We're out here trying to make all the money and buy all the stuff. You can't take any of that with you. But you can use it as a tool to bring other people with you. That's why we want to make some money. Because we want to bring other people. To, we want to reach people. Right? Propel the gospel. I love going to India. Brother Cosmo, also, he's grown up in India, and he's got the, you know, three orphanages. I have an orphanage. He's got several, you know, things going on in India. And, uh, you know, we have a ministry in India. I go, we have 30 churches in our ministry, so I go around and preach all the churches. We have crusades. I need money for that. I pay for that. Now, he's maybe, he's a little smarter than me. Somehow, he, he makes money from it, don't you? I don't know how you do it. But, <laughs> but he blesses, gives them so much money. Like, they're, you know, changes their life, helps them sustain themselves and everything. And I'm still working hard at fit, you know, trying to make money so I can help more people in India, you know. <laughs> so, but that's what it's for. Yeah, to help people, to reach people. But sometimes, can I be honest, I love you, but sometimes we're so selfish. Yeah. Selfish. Prideful, arrogant, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You remember why Lucifer got kicked out of heaven? Mm -hmm. Yes, Pride. he did. Pride. Exactly. And you know what one of the main things he uses today to get people Pride. to miss heaven? Pride. 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 Yeah. You think you're okay just the way you are. No, you're not. Yeah. I'm born again on fire for Jesus and I'm still not okay the way. I, I need some more growth. I got to stay humble, got to stay a student, got to stay teachable. Lord, please teach me some more. You know, Brother Cosmo came here to do a seminar for us, and he, he, he invited me to come to a seminar at his school and to, to train his staff on business. But we, what he don't know is I'm learning a lot from him, too. Because I stay teachable, I'm humble, I'm watching, I'm listening, I'm asking questions. Like We're all learning and growing. So is your desire to be used by the Lord? Amen. But don't feel like you have to use your ability. He will work through you. Philippians 2.13, it says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And this verse emphasizes that God not only gives us the desire to do his will, but also empowers us to carry it out. That's good news because you don't have to trust in your own ability. You ever hear anybody say, I, I, I can't do that? Well, I already know you can't do it. It's not about you. And really, that's kind of prideful, right? When you're, when you're thinking, well, I can't, I'm not going to do it because I can't do it. You're thinking it is supposed to be about your ability. It's not about your ability. It's about God's ability working through you as you surrender to him. So he can do that for you. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse five, it says, 
Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Anybody ever seen my brick breaking video, for example, when I break 10 bricks? How many of you have seen that? Yeah? He breaks more than me. Yeah. Not for long. Because <laughs> I haven't tried that many yet. <laughs> so, but you know, did anybody see the video when I did this? After I break the bricks, what do I do right afterwards? I give glory to God. I give him the credit. I don't take it from myself. It's not about me. It's about the, the power that God gives me to work through me to do things, right? So he wants to work through you. Maybe not to break, you know, 10, 20, 30 bricks. But, but you can break the back of the devil, you know? You can speak the word of God. You can set people free. You can cast out demons, heal the sick. All these things God has given to his children to do. It's not through your power. It's through the power of God. But you got to trust him for it. You remember the popular scripture, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yeah. Bah, it's not this kind of strength. Gives you power, dunamis power, explosive power to do things in the spirit realm that you never thought possible. That's so awesome. You know, I used to watch all the videos, you know, with uh, all the healing evangelists and everything. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Like the Benny Hens and all this, like people just falling under the spirit. They're getting miraculously healed. I'm like, Lord, can you use me that way? I want to be used, you know. I want to be productive in the kingdom and set people free. And so I remember the first time I went to India, I said, I, I studied for six months, like being in the presence of the Lord, getting closer, getting ready for my trip, my first trip to India, preaching crusades. When I get there, the anointing just hit me heavy, fell upon me. The Lord started speaking to me. Where I can hear him clearly. I, Son, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. And then he started giving me words of knowledge. Okay? He's given me words of knowledge. Sometimes we have to just be quiet and listen. For him to give you that word of knowledge. And he started telling me what's going on in some people's lives. Some people I can look at you and I can tell you what the Lord is doing. Or what the enemy has been doing in your life. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And this is so important that we're teachable. So that you allow a man or woman of God to come and minister to you. When they see something. And allow them to speak into your life. Because it's going to be edifying. It's going to be encouraging. And it can set you free from things. Some people might need, need deliverance from demonic spirits. That's right. You know. Even pastors by the way. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're all the same. We're all attacked by demonic spirits all the time. You know, I'm fighting off every devil even in, in the city to have this meeting, just this small meeting like this, this this weekend. You know, it's working really hard. But God can use you. You can do all things through him who gives you strength. And when we get saved, the Lord, after we get saved, will distribute spiritual gifts to us as he sees fit. He said, I want to bless you to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. You know, Lord, why is my hand on fire? Huh? I'm going to bless you to speak to the nations, man. Be a messenger. Wow, how come I'm speaking different than I used to? I just feel more confident for some reason. Right? He might bless somebody just to be just such an amazing servant. Like, hey, I want you to go serve in ministry and bless my people. And he helps you to grow and mature because you're obedient to that call to serve. He might give you a spiritual gift to, you know, uh, 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 speak a message in tongues or interpret a message in tongues. Like there's so many things, God's gifts, you know, that he can give you. Matter of fact, Romans 12, 6 to 8, it says, we have different gifts. Matter of fact, let's turn there. Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. Romans 12. I'll take a drink real quick while you turn to Romans 12. Because I think it's important for you to see this 
can understand that this is actually available to you. And did you know, children, it's even available to you too. If you fall asleep in my service, I'll come and smack you in the side of the head. I'm a martial artist. I'm just joking, but I might. <laughs> I'll send Mr. Master Cosmo to, 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 to wake you up real quick. <laughs> okay, Romans chapter 12. Watch it. Verse 6 to 8. Ready? If you're there, say I'm there. I'm there. All right. We have different gifts. Everybody say we have different gifts. We have different gifts. According to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. In accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Do what God has called you to do. When you start recognizing a gift that he's given to you, start doing it. Now I'm more comfortable preaching to a thousand people than I am one-on-one. -on -one. Before I peed in my pants. <laughs> right? This one, the, the, the Holy Spirit anointing kicks in. And then I get out there and God uses me as I listen, as I obey. And I flow in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to tell you right now what the Lord's showing me. So listen if you want to know what the Lord's showing me right now. There are people in here that are actually resistant to the message that I'm speaking. Not willfully resistant, like I don't want to hear this. But your heart has been hardened for some reason and you don't want to receive. You're going to have to break free from that. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he said he'll lift you up. If your heart's hard, nothing's getting in. It's another sermon about the four different types of ground, but you need to have good ground. Ready to receive the, res the seed of the word of God so it can be planted, watered, and then grow. Ephesians 4.11 through 13 says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for, for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's his will. He wants us to, to grow as a, as a body. And he's put different gifts in the body. And he's put different uh, ministry uh, positions in place for the edifying and equipping of the saints. The Christians. His children. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11 says, I got to hurry. I'm sorry. I've let you get there. But uh, we're on short time today because some some people came here just to eat. Oof, that's <laughs> Sometimes I'm on me, you know. That's all right. <laughs> 1 Peter 4. Are you ready? See, I'm ready. Anybody love the Word of God? I love the Word of God. Oh my goodness. I'm so, I can just eat up the Word of God all day long. It's so exciting. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Let that sink in a minute because there, God forgive me, but because I don't like pointing fingers or saying anything bad about pastors or whatever. But the truth of the matter is there are people, even in ministry, they're doing the work of the ministry for selfish gain. It's not to serve others. Some of them. There's a lot of great men and women of God. They're out there. They're passionately serving others. And that's awesome. But we need to pray for the ones that are not. And sometimes rebuke them. And that's okay. You know, God calls you to do that. But... He says we, we should serve others with that gift. Whatever your gift is, use it to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever. Amen. Hallelujah. So listen now, family. God has called everyone to repentance. He's given you a purpose. That's, has, that's got to sink in. That's why I'm pausing. Sila, stop and think about it. He's given you a purpose, even you, no matter who you are. It's not his will that you perish. He wants to use you for his glory. 
He wants to move upon you so powerfully by his Holy Spirit to where you can start hearing his voice and start making choices that are going to bless many people, but you got to humble yourself before God, not think that you know everything already. I got so much to learn, you know. I mean, I've been pastoring just like 2008. I started pastoring. I have so much to learn. I like know this much literally like. I'm like, why are these people here listening to me? I don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> For real. But we have so much to learn. So we should always be like, Lord, please teach me. Please teach me. Show me the gifts that you've given to me and help me to grow inside those gifts. Now, I want to ask you a question. Is there anybody here that has the experience of moving in the gifts of prophecy? Anybody here? that has moved in the gifts of prophecy or the gifts of the word of knowledge? Anybody? Gifts of prophecy or the word of knowledge? Give the Lord a moment here. Can I have you two brothers, can you stand up up here and just face the people for a minute? Yeah, just here, here, yeah. here, here. Just face the people. And I want you guys, I know th these are two powerful men of God here that hear from the Lord. And in conclusion today, I just want to encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit if, as you look around and see if the Lord would give you a word for somebody. See if the Lord would give you a word for somebody. And I want to pray for you guys that he would do that. Yeah. Father, in the name of your son, Yeshua, Lord, I just pray that you would anoint the Vester and Brother Cosmo to hear your voice. Father, with the word of knowledge, the prophetic message, something from heaven. If there's anyone here that just needs a word from you or even deliverance, a word of wisdom, I pray, Father, you speak to them right now in the name of Yeshua. Yeah. Hallelujah. So just stand there while I'm finishing. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And just watch for a moment. And to see if the Lord would give you a message for anyone. Okay? So after we receive Christ and he gives us the Holy Spirit, then we have to continue in Christ. That's John chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. It says, remain in me. Also, uh, as I also remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing productive and divine, I would say. If we want to be the most effective in his kingdom on earth, then we have to love him so much that we desire with all of our heart to obey him, to live our lives pleasing to him. If you really want to be fruitful, productive on earth, I encourage you to just fall in love with Jesus. Just fall in love with him. James chapter 1 verse 25 says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I want to I wanna pray this scripture over you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21, is a, it's, a, it's a prayer. I want to pray this over you today. So take this personally. Are you ready? Take this prayer personally for you. It says, now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, in conclusion, while you guys are just listening to the Holy Spirit, I want to give you an opportunity, like the video said earlier, to do what I did many years ago, to make Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Lord of your life. If you had religion, 
but not a relationship. If you have a desire to know God, but you don't feel like you really know him personally. If you felt the, uh, 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 the enemy spirit trying to distract you today and pull you away from the gospel, that's probably a good sign that you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because the enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says that the Lord came to give life and life more abundantly. He wants to bless you. So if you could just, everybody bow your head and close your eyes for just a moment, please. I want to pray over you and just focus on him. Keep your eyes closed in reverence to God. Father, in the name of your son, Yeshua, fall upon them now, Lord. By your Holy Spirit, touch them. Touch their heart. Reveal to them that you are calling them to a life of greatness through the Holy Spirit. <coughs> if that's you today, either you don't know Yeshua, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you did and you've fallen away, and you want to come back to Him, you want to repent, I want to give you that opportunity today. With everybody's head bowed, your eyes closed, if that's you on the count of three, I just want you to lift up your hand to say, hey, I want you to include me in that prayer. One, two, three. Just lift your hand to heaven. If that's you, you want to receive Jesus Christ. There's one. Just lift your hand until I see it. Two, three, four, five, six. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Just raise your hand. Seven, eight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Okay, if you, if you lifted your hand, just stand to your feet quickly, please. Just stand to your feet quickly. I want to pray over you. If you lift your hand, give them a hand clap. Come on, stand to your feet if that was you. Okay? Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you to lift both hands to heaven and repeat after me in prayer, okay? Say, Father, I humble myself to you. In the name of your son, Yeshua. I know I've sinned. I repent. I turn to you. Away from my sin. And I ask you to forgive me. My heart is yours now. My life is yours now. I confess Yeshua as my Lord and Savior. Please write my name in the book of life. My desire is to obey you all the days of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to share your gospel. And I'll give you all the glory. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, stay right where you're at for a second. Do you have anything to say? Go ahead. Yes, I do. Thank you, God, for these wonderful people. Um, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's real. Those are not idle words. The God of heaven and earth, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you were my friend, and you are my friend, and I knew you, I wouldn't leave you. Yes. I would protect you and watch you and help you. Yes. That's the natural thing that men should do. Mm. I had three daughters. I do that. Mm. Uh, there's a way that you can get an audience with God immediately. Mm. Remember this. First, cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. How do you do that? The thoughts that you have, you can circumvent those thoughts when you say, Thank you, Jesus. If they come repeatedly, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just continue to say that. Yes. You will make the devil run. Yes. Amen. He will flee. Draw nigh to God, and he'll drive nigh to you. Resist the devil. You resist him when you thank God. And he will flee in terror. He'll flee in terror. It's like a big angel stood in front of you. Yeah. God loves you. Amen. The word of God for you for my people, is that there's a spirit of oppression in the land. A spirit of oppression. It is it is ugly. It is heavy. It is deep. It takes our vitality, our life. But he's not stronger than God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when that, that thing comes on you, like the pastor said, Oppression, 
anxiety, when it comes on you, say, nope, this is not my spirit. Greater is he, say this, greater is he, greater is he that is in me, it's in me than he that is in the world. Than he that is in the world. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. These men mean that. They was, if they could hold you and carry you and protect you every day, they would do it. But God has given you angels. You all have angels assigned. Everyone, yes. everyone has an angel. Yeah. Some people have more than one angel. Some have many angels. The little people maybe have more, more than one angel. The Lord told me this when I'll be 70 years old. April 19th. He told me this. He said, you fought many, many battles. I said, really? He said, don't fight no more. He said, when the ancient saints come of age, he said, I stand and I fight for them religiously and diligently. Yes. It's not good to mess with the old saints. <laughs> it's not. I'm telling you what I know. He told me this. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean yeah. out into your own understanding. Don't try to think about it. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will he'll take a step, pick him up, put him down. Mm. Just stay humble because you're going to feel the power of God on you. Just stay humble. Mm. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah, is it give they sit? Uh, in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, <clears throat> I was actually praying for Maria. Did I say that right? Mariah. 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 Ah, it's so hard. I was praying for Miranda and I the other night, and God was showing me how good this kid is, actually. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, and I want to bless all of you with this word, yeah. because I've seen some dark kids in my life. I've been doing this for over, like, 20 years, and you guys are good kids. God was showing me how good this yeah, it's girl is, yes. and you, you kind of be yeah. a rebel. You're yeah. like, you're pretending to be a rebel. You're pretending to be bad or want to be bad. I was a dark kid. I was pretending to be yeah. good for my mama. No. I love my mom so much. I was pretending to be good, but I was really dark inside. I was mm. struggling with demons. No. I was a dark kid. But I was praying for this girl, and God was showing Maria's heart. And I won't tell all the details. I'll tell her in the right time. But uh, she, God was showing me how good you kids are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I want to bless you with this word that you are good kids. Oh, yeah. Remember that. That's true. The Lord loves you, and you are really awesome. You're going to do great things. Because yes. I have dealt with kids that are like, oh, my gosh, you don't even want to know how dark it is. Yeah. And I help them. Mm -hmm. I overhaul them. This kid is almost demonic and dark. Yeah. And I overhaul and give him GD and every him, baptize him on a horse straw, and he's like my son now. Mm -hmm. You guys are so awesome. I wish I was here in St. Louis. Man, I would love to work with Pastor Ray, you know, like, I want you to know you're a good kid. Do you believe that? Yes, sir? Yes, sir. So claim that in yeah. Jesus' name and walk the walk Amen. because you are powerful. Yes. You know, Master Cosmo, Pastor Ray can do this. I believe a thousand percent yes. he can do much more. You are awesome, okay? Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. Thank you. I want you to stand and if you could come forward, I'd like to pray for you. Yes. You come up here. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, just make a straight line across the front facing me. Let's face the pastor. Straight across here. There you go. Straight across. Face me. There you go. I'm going to come out there, so I need space. All right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I am so proud of each and every one of you. Yes. This is exactly what happened to me 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. I came to the front, mm -hmm. gave my life to the Lord. And when I stood up, mm -hmm. it felt like the shackles that were on my ankles came off. Mm -hmm. I was set free. It felt so wonderful. The day before, I was using F-words. Mm -hmm. And then when I gave my life to the Lord and the shackles came off, I heard somebody say a little D-word, D-A. And I'm like, why would they say that? I got to fit. Like my spirit, I, it just changed me on the inside. I was a new person. And I know God wants to use you. He has a purpose for you, like I said earlier. You got to receive that. Yes. got to receive that. So when I pray for each of you, I'd like to come and lay hands on you. And I just want you to just breathe it in, the power of God, and let him touch you. As I pray for them, uh, let's have, um, uh, how about 
Dr. Cosmo, could you stand behind each one of them yeah. just in case, please? Because sometimes the Holy Spirit hits you hard and you fall out. So you need some minutes sometimes. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Let the Holy Don't, don't resist the Lord. Let him touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. And after I get done with you and I pray for you, um, just go back to your seat for just a moment, okay? Just lift your hands to heaven. Come on, just lift them up. Be free. Lift your hands up. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Yeshua, your son, I thank you so much for to fail your child that you love so much that you brought here today to do the work in his heart. I just pray, Father, right now, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, fill him with your power in Jesus' name. Fill him with your power, Father. Yeah, there it is. Just receive it. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. yes, yes, Lord. Oh, he's anointing you right now, young brother. For good works for his kingdom. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Oh, just give it all to him. Yes. Just give it all to him. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. Don't be distracted by anything that the enemy tells you in your mind right now. I can see distractions. There's an enemy throughout this trying to pull away what God's doing from you, doing for your life. Yes. The Bible says if you resist him, he'll flee from you. Yes. So I want to I want to encourage you to command him to leave. I resist you, Satan, in Jesus' name. Yes. Flee! Yes. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Lord. Touch him. Fill him, Lord. Yes. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord. You love him so much. Be set free in Jesus' name. Yes. Be set free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's been some bad influences in your life, young lady. And the Lord would tell you to guard yourself, your friendships. Don't invite the wrong people into your life. Sometimes you have to love them at a distance. Share the gospel with them, yes. Don't hang out with them and do the same things that they do. God wants to free you. But if you hold on to the things that the enemy gave you, you're not going to be free. God loves you so much, he wants you to be free. Father, anoint her right now to be a shining light, a good example to every person, every friend that she comes in contact with. Fill her now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Oh, yes. Just receive it. Receive his anointing, his love. Holy Spirit, just feel her right now. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can feel like a, 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 a see a, like a fire coming down upon your head. That's his anointing. Yes. He just wants to fill you with his power and strength so you can stand up against the enemy every time the enemy wants to attack you. You have the power to resist him. That's right. Oh, brother, uh, can you minister to her for a few more minutes? I feel some resistance. The Lord is trying to speak to her and get to her, but there's some resistance. Can you step over to Brother Cosmo for just a moment? Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for this beautiful sister, Lord, that you brought here today. I pray, Lord, that you just touch her, Lord. In Jesus' name. On the top of her head, the soles of her feet. Protect her, Lord. Help her to make good decisions based on your word, led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that she's a good mother, that she'll be a great example for her. You'll help train them up. You'll help her train them up in the way they should go so that when they're older, they won't depart from them. Give her wisdom, Father. She needs your wisdom, Father, not man's wisdom. Divine wisdom from heaven. I thank you, Father, for provision over her life. Like a birthday, like a new day, Lord. Uh, Help her to make the decisions needed to go to the next level of her life. We trust it to you right now. Grant us kingdom come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray for protection over this little one, Lord God. Help her to to grow up as a mighty woman of God. I resist the enemy, Satan. In Jesus' name, from her life, I pray for protection. Foul devil, I command you to flee right now in Jesus' name. You cannot have this little girl. 
Father, her mom, I believe, gives her to you right now. Yes. Yes. Yes, she says yes, Lord. You can have her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Provide for her, protect her, and guide her by your Holy Spirit. Let your will yes. be done in her life. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Father, I thank Hallelujah. you for Lance. He's been coming up as a leader, being an influence on others. Mm, thank you, Lord. He's got so many years, Lord, that you can guide him and direct him. And I just pray that right now he humbles himself yes. to you, submits all to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, receive yes. his power now. Yes, there it is. Just receive his power. Yes. God wants to anoint you to lay hands yes. on the sick and they shall recover. Receive the fire from yes. heaven right now. Yes. Be willing and obedient to the Lord. He's yes. going to use you. For his glory. Yes. Just trust in the Lord in all your ways. Do not lean on your own understanding. That's right. And he will guide your path. Yes. Father, thank you for Tristan. Amen. This young black belt Lord that just wants to love on you, yes. to do your will. Yes. He wants to grow as a leader. Yes. So I pray, Father, right now that you would anoint him with a special gift of leadership on his yes. life. Guide him by your spirit. Fill him right now, Father with your anointing. Let the fire from heaven fall upon him right now yes. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. <sighs> yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just receive it now. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Father, there's some ladies here that's loving you. Yes. They've had some challenges in their life. Yes. Some people that have tried to pull them away, spirit of depression that has tried to come upon them. But greater is he that's in them than he that's in the world. Oh, yes. 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 Through Christ, you have the victory in Jesus' name. Receive it right now yes. from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Right. Be filled with the anointing and power yes. of God from on high. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give her strength to overcome every temptation. Give yes. her wisdom, Father. Yes. To see when the enemy is coming. Yes. To know it ahead of time. So she can make good decisions, Father. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. God's got an anointing on you. You just... Lift your hands to heaven, Lord. Fill her right now with your anointing in Jesus' name. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Let her light, you'll let your light shine through her, Father. Yes. Let her be a leader for your kingdom. Yes. That sets the captives free. Yes. Oh, that proclaims your word, your gospel, Father. Oh, I see you have a special gift upon this young lady, Father. Yes. I don't even understand it, but you do. I just know there's something big there. Keep yes. diving into the Word of God. Everything you got. Yes. Develop that. Yes. Develop that attitude of obedience to the Lord. God, I don't care what you say. I'll just do it. Yes. Just tell me what to do. Yes. Develop that. He's got big plans for you. Yes. Wow. Yes. I've been doing this a long time. I actually never felt that before.
Father, I just pray for this young lady that loves you. You would just continue to help her to grow in your kingdom. Oh, I feel like, Brother Cosmo, you're supposed to yes. pray for her. Uh, Come pray for her. Yes. Let's do it. You pray for him. Yeah. You pray for him. Hallelujah. Yeah. What's your name? Bless the yeah. Lord in Jesus' name. All right, just leave up to leave up your hands. That today's the day, a shot of victory. Or you walk on this earth, you speak and things happen. I always pray on how you speak. The fig tree dies, the blind heal, the deaf hear, the lamb walk, even the dead come alive. So I just speak that up on my sister today. I do not even know how to pray in time, but I bless her. I bless her new life that she has given today, that she will walk with authority. And she will call upon your name when needs be that Jesus, that's all she needs to do. It's Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. May she walk with anointing. May she be blessed. Hallelujah. And be protected. There's a new day, new dawn in Christ. Hallelujah. So I bless you, sister. Just start a simple word. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Amen. Amen. Amen.